there's one quote from Abraham Maslow, like uh, on top of my shelf, like you can see them see right now. But it reminds me about like stepping outside of my comfort zone again and again and again because that's what makes us grow, of course. So um, it's not just about realizing some things. It's like, yeah, taking those small decisions in those critical moments to step outside of the comfort zone, even though sometimes our mind says, oh, don't do that. It's too dangerous. It's too bad. Oh, what will others think about it? What? Wait, be careful. You can, it's dangerous. Whatever it is, like we sometimes have those limits in, my, in our mind. And he's here. He is here. Cristiano has entered the building. Welcome back, guys, uh, to a new episode of the Sculpted Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, you used to share on, and today's topic is all about how to maximize the results uh, through working with our mind. So, welcome, you used. Thank you so much. I'm uh, glad to be here. Yeah, uh, so quickly, Julius, if you could just give us some background on uh, who you are and what you do, just so that our listeners can get to know you, because obviously you might be a new face for some of our listeners. You primarily work in Germany. Uh, we do have actually a lot of German listeners, but for all of our non-German listeners who want to know you, please. Yeah, of course. Um, and I'm excited because uh, I, I think it's my first podcast in English. I mean, I've done a couple in German, but glad to be on today. And yeah, just to give you, you guys a little background about um, myself. I mean, I started um, as a young guy, always trying to become professional. Um, I used to play in a, a youth academy team uh, here in Germany. Um, always had the dream to become a professional football player. Um, and I mean, yeah, it all went well. I um, played in a youth academy team since I'm since I was 12 years old. I moved to a different club, and then actually after my um, abitur, my high school diploma, um, I yeah changed clubs to move to uh, a Regionalliga team here in Germany. It would be considered like a semi-professional professional environment. A lot of clubs in this um, league, it's the fourth league in Germany, play a uh, professional. Um, and yeah, it, I, I kind of had a really good time as a young player, but also there were, were a lot of challenges. And um, during this time when um, I learned about the dark sides of the football business, uh, I would say, um, I was a player who thought a lot on the pitch. I was um, yeah, sometimes doubting myself too and had some difficult times, and um, which, which made me the person I am today, of course, but um, made me open for, for, other op for other options. And then I uh, took a scholarship to go to the United States. So I studied uh, three years in the United States at NC State uh, in North Carolina, so in a really good ACC school. Um, had a really good time and it was interesting because um, the player who played in Germany, the player that I was in Germany and the player that I was in the United States were kind of two different players. Even though I didn't change like from my body or like I physically or, and I didn't change from my skills in football, like I played different on the pitch. And it all came back to my mindset because when I was in Germany at the in the end, I yeah, put a lot of pressure on myself and wasn't really able to just play football, you know, just go out to the pitch and play. And when I went to the United States, I kind of was a different player and just played with a lot of confidence and uh, went into the game and had a really successful college career and uh, ended up with an MLS combine invitation. And um, my, my question that I asked myself was, what would have happened if I was able to show that back in Germany? And why didn't I? Why and why wasn't I able to show what I showed in the United States back in Germany? And uh, that's what, yeah, brought me on this path to become a mental performance coach. I would say in, in English, um, mental performance coach for football players, working with players up into the Bundesliga today, uh, professional players who are trying to maximize like every aspect of the game. And um, if I would ask you guys or anyone else, like. How do you think, like, how important is the mental part 
um, to show you performance. And most of the guys would say, yeah, it's it's critical. It's really important. And if you ask them, like, how many of you, like, practice and work on that systematically, professionally, probably uh, not a whole lot of players would say, yeah, I do. Um, and this is what I was, too. Like, I I didn't have someone, like, to, to work on that. Like, I would work with a nutritionist, with a athletic trainer with an um, athletic coach, whatever. Um, so my my mission, I guess, I am on today is to bring mental training, personal development, mindset, however you want to call it, uh, to the yeah to the football industry uh, to help players yeah show what they have inside of them. Because I know that when I was playing in the States and just played freely on the pitch, I was able to show way more of my potential than I was when I played in, in Germany. I mean, I had a really good time in Germany. Played two years like after my high school diploma, only like football and played professionally. But I think they were, they could, I guess um, you could never say that uh, 100, to be 100% sure, but I think like there would be a better probability of me going even like to higher divisions in Germany if I had known b before what I, what I got to experience in the States. So this is uh, something about me. Besides my my job, my profession, or my passion, I would say it's not it's not just a job for me. It's it's my life basically. But besides that, um, I'm um, I'm a dad. I have a one and a half year old daughter who who's probably my best mental coach right now. <laughs> she's teaching me so much about life and about everything. And um, no, she's bringing a lot of joy to me and my my wife and. Um, yeah, so it's all going well. Um, I'm excited to, uh, to talk a little bit about, about the mental part of the game because I think it's so key to yeah to just show what you get to get inside of you. And um, so yeah, I'm excited. I hope this little background about me, about me is enough um, to get into it. Um, thank you very much for sharing your story. And it's very fascinating and inspiring as well. And um, as we already mentioned, the mental side of, of the football game or in general uh, sports is uh, heaven, heavenly or he heavenly uh, overlooked at some points. Often players don't know how to approach this side of football. It's not only always the physical aspect you have to work on, but also the mental frameworks, I just call them. And I think um, you can also, also touch base on, on some couple strategies uh, throughout the podcast. But um, just for our listeners to know, you already touched on, on the topic you mentioned it was about um we are often our own biggest critics and i want to ask you why are we always our biggest critics because we are always in our own head we all can change ourselves and our our self mood and maybe do you have any strategies specifically how we can get out of our own rut or our own hole and maybe have some some small techniques to work on being more positive in in certain situations mm. yes um um, I think the the reason because it's overlooked because sometimes I think it's um, it has like a problem orientation kind of oh I don't need to work on the mental side of the game I don't have any problems and um, for me like I don't approach this whole topic from like a problem orientation I, I approach it with like a performance orientation like hey how can you bring out your best performances not just on the pitch like off the pitch so I think um, this is something that has to change that um, especially football players um, realize that you can always get better in every area. I mean, Mbappé, like probably one of the fastest players, he's not like stopping to work physically on his body just because he is uh, fast. So in Erling Haaland, for example, he's still using mental training to prepare for games and everything, even though he's one of the best players. So I think um, this will help like that this area becomes more popular that players realize hey I, I gotta work on that just as I'm working on my left and right foot or my, my physical body um, and of course like sometimes we are our, our own worst uh, inner critic um, there's an African proverb which I really like it says um, if there is no enemy within the enemy outside can do you no harm uh, which I I love because it's all about like this inner talk that we all have. I mean, everybody's talking to oneself. Some some guys more, some less. Some focus more on 
um, this inner talk, some uh, focusing not on it, but um, I guess we're all talking to our to ourselves. Um, even the even the prof even professional players. I mean, I'm working with players up into the Bundesliga, and it's the same for everyone. We're all playing the, the inner game. We're all playing like this mental game. So um, I think this is the first point that really helps dealing with that. Like because when I was playing in Germany back then, and I I realized okay, I'm someone who is someone like who's thinking a lot. And I used to th used to think like, oh, it's just me. Like, why do I think so much? Why am I uh, sometimes like not as confident as I could be? And I always thought, oh, it's just me. But realizing like it's every one of us, like even Bundesliga players, even really, really successful, and especially persons like whatever people in, in any area, they're all having this inner talk. And this is one, um, I guess, realization that helps a lot. Hey, it's not just because you're you, it's because you're human. We all human, we all have that. So this will help with, okay, it's something that's normal. And the second point is, then how can we, de can, how can I deal with that? Because it's not about not having negative thought. It's not, not about never struggling or not never being negative or whatever. Like we haven't. And a little part in the brain that just gives us some thoughts that sometimes doesn't make any sense. But um, realizing, okay, it's I, I have the power to change that um, helps a lot. And I guess one technique, because you asked for a technique that uh, will help, um, is something that I call the stop technique. Like just stopping negative thoughts for example when you realize okay you're in this rut like you said in this circle of okay i'm struggling i'm, I'm really critical with myself maybe it hurts me on the pitch maybe i don't um i'm not as free not as courageous not as um op yeah open to sh to try new things um it's this stop technique that helps stop those negative thoughts so the first that the s stands for like if you spot them like if you spot the negative th thoughts it's about stopping them. I usually say, hey, think about a big red stop sign, which will help like, okay, hey, first of all, we got to stop them when we are conscious of it. The T stands for take a deep breath because the breath, like it's always here for us. Like when we, uh, we are, when we are born, like and till the day we die, like we have the breath with us and it always brings us to the, to the present moment. So once we stopped the thoughts, we took a deep breath and it's just like this one little breath like we're all, all, always only one breath away from our best self so just taking one deep breath and then observe the O stands for observe the thoughts because if we don't do that and we just believe them they become true like, like thoughts become reality but only if we believe them but if we only observe our thoughts, not not saying, okay, I am my thoughts, I am what I'm thinking right now is the truth, because sometimes it's it's just like, like I said, stupid what we what the brain is giving us um, for for some thoughts. So if we observe them, just as we observe, like a pencil, like I have a pencil in front of me, so I am looking at the pencil right now, but I am not the pencil, and if I'm observing my thoughts from the outside. I am not my thoughts, just as I'm not the pencil when I look at it. So observing the thoughts and saying, okay, just gives us a little room between us and we don't need to identify with them. We can observe them from the outside and evaluate, does it make sense? Or in, in some cases, it just doesn't make sense. I want to give you an example. Like when I was playing in the youth, I was a player who developed slowly like um, in the physical area. So I was a really smaller player. My technique was really good, which helped me become like a professional player once. But um, back in the, in the youth, it was hard. So my thought was, oh, I'm, I'm too small, which was a stupid belief that I had about myself because, uh, I mean, the best player in the world, Lionel Messi, is small. So saying oh i'm small and um thinking about that and uh, having a negative feeling about that 
just wasn't like necessary, but I didn't observe the thoughts. So stop, take a deep breath, observe, and the P stands for power statement. So when I know that, okay, that my thoughts are just like, doesn't make sense anymore, doesn't, don't make sense right now. And I have one power statement that helps me in this moment. Something like, hey, it's all, me, or it's all in me, or I got this, or hey, I'm excited to, to do that, or whatever it is. Like just one power statement that you can give yourself to give you new, new courage, I guess, and new um, energy and hope to proceed, even though um, there was like maybe some struggle, some doubt, some uncertainty or whatever, um, helps a lot. So it's stopping the thoughts, taking a deep breath, observing them from the outside and if they don't make sense give yourself a power statement uh, to proceed um, in the direction that you want um, to give you one one uh, technique that i usually use with players when i'm talking about this topic i think that's great oh the us i actually have a few things here to say I i've written them down on my hand um unfortunately i only have permanent laughter with me so this is going to stay with me for a while but <laughs> There's a few things that I wanted to point out. And the first thing is, this is back to one of your first points, actually. And it's when you're asking a bunch of footballers their opinion on the mental side of the game, right? It's, yeah, they think it's important. But then you go finer to the, who actually works on it. Now, okay, yeah, mainly there's people who do meditation. They do things for their uh, mental well-being, which isn't necessarily the direct stuff yeah it can help it definitely can help um it brings awareness brings self-awareness to things that you're doing right now obviously but what i found interesting um when i've previously spoken to you as well is it, it's more the action right it's the 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 things that you do in a pursuit of proactively like when you were saying before it's i don't have a problem now but I mean, it only takes one person's opinion to tell to to completely deconstruct your values and everything like this, right? So you have to kind of switch the, uh, I guess your your strategy to be more of a proactive approach because there will be setbacks. There will be people who tell you things. You will tell yourself things. You might create a habit of, of thought where you're just completely just being your biggest critic. You're being very negative, right? And what we will talk about later, I'm sure, is about how that isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's actually your perspective on that voice. But mm. being ready and having those tools readily available to actually counteract those those things in life that will pop up. Everyone ha everyone has them. And as you were saying, uh, your, your top Bundesliga players, they've got them, right? Everyone in the world has them. And what we were saying in our last episode with Dan is actually everyone is a human, like you, like you said, right? We made a joke about it, how I still can't believe that Ronaldo is a functioning human being just like me. It's crazy. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? But everyone is a human. They just have strategies like your analogy of the stop. This is a great like uh, analogy that we can all use. And I really like the observation part where you're talking about observing your thoughts for just being thoughts, right? And the analogy that you gave of the pen was perfect. And I actually was speaking with the goalkeeper... The other day um he's, he's he's from germany and he was asking me how can he deal with like the, these these thoughts and things like that and i said like your thoughts are merely just thoughts right if i'm thinking well i'm gonna walk two steps to the left but i actually walk two steps to the right i've just proven that my thoughts are merely thoughts and you don't actually have to let your thoughts dictate what you do and I think that it's it's a it's a great um it's a it's a shock really because you then understand that you can do something about that right you can just observe your thoughts for being thoughts and that's a meditation technique in itself right you can look around a room and you can name everything you see and then the med the the meditation technique is actually looking at everything and not putting names to it right so you you're understanding your thoughts your processes and all of this it's, it's a great way to train and. I think that your analogy of stop is it's 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 a really good one because yeah it's so easy to remember you know you, if you if you're self-aware of your thoughts which is something that maybe not everyone is but it, it takes a few times a day just to okay i've remembered this thought write it down 
and now you're creating that self-awareness so that it's habitual you you have a thought you stop right and you've got that process to go through which is so powerful because as to my point action is key and uh the next thing that i wanted to say was your belief of you being not like big enough or you was just too small right that pre-narrative that you had that is your inner critic right but you could take that in a negative way, right? This pre-narrative could, uh, pre-narrative, the the word that I use is a pre-narrative, right? It's it's a pre-established belief that you have that is a habitual way of thinking that can either hinder you or support you. And that one, at the time, it may have hindered your performance, right? It's, it's something that you believed that was something that, oh, okay, it's because I'm too short or if the coach left you out, maybe it's because I'm too short, right? But... There's other ways to flip that, to use that to benefit you. And you can understand, okay, this is a thought. It's a natural thought. Yes, you can do the stop um, analogy, but that isn't necessarily the best thing in the moment because at the you kind of have to change this to be a habitual way of thinking, right? So you've, you've got the stop. But now for you, what do you think a better way to long term change the pre narratives of habitual thoughts like that to change them from hindering you to actually serving you? Great, great question. And um, yeah, thanks for the context as well. And there was so much that uh, I could go into. Uh, I just had this thought in my head uh, that mental training is like brushing your teeth. Like you don't just brush your teeth when you have problems with your teeth. You brush them every day to prevent problems in the future. And that's how I see mental training. It's like, preparation for everything that's coming i mean maybe in i don't know half a year you're standing in front of a couple thousand thousand people and there's a scout that is looking for you and you got to perform on this day to maybe make a contract and it's like this day or maybe something bad happens or something difficult happens and you got an injury or whatever it is that the, the coach uh, moves or whatever it happens and then you're glad if you practiced um, and prepared for everything that's ca- that, that's coming so yeah totally I uh, agree with that and especially the the example about Ronaldo um, yeah if, if I tell you uh, between you and me and Ronaldo it's like the differences are not as big as you think like he has done a lot of things in the past that moved him to to a different direction but i think we humans are generally pretty similar but then our habits like move us apart like what we do every day and um what we think and whatever um and i think this is something i want to um talk about next like because because it's all perspective like um of course like i had this thought oh i'm too small i am not big enough i'm too slow whatever and this thought or this pre-narrative like you said and i like this it's yeah it was like a story that i told myself over and over again it's like it was a belief like a conviction that i had um so it's about changing those beliefs and something that serves serves us and in this example and i think it's a good example because a lot of youth players um go through that i mean of course like it's not everybody who's big right away and physically strong so um it's a good example and if you have this thought or this pre-narrative like we now say um hey i'm too small i don't know if i can make it the first step from going to this this uncertainty from this negative pre-narrative to something that serves you that's that was the question right how we shift them yes so it the first one is of course become aware of it because if you like you said if you if we're not aware of it we can't change it and i wasn't aware of it like i told that to myself over and over again but i didn't know that i told myself and i didn't know that it was just a belief because back then nobody told me like i just didn't know so i wasn't able to to shift to shift it but if you're aware hey what are some thoughts that sometimes then like prevent me from yeah, having a good feeling on the on the pitch, for example, uh, and you realize, hey, I I think all the time oh, I'm not big enough, I'm too small. The the second step is to reframe it, and 
you, you said something right too about like, hey, it's how you look at it, right? It's um, it's the same thing, but I can can look at it from different angles. I don't have a a cup of a cup right now uh, with me, but the cup with where you drink a, like a cup of tea with this handle, you know. You, um, if I hold like a cup of tea with the handle on, on the left side, for me it's on the left side, but when you look at it, it's on the right side. It's the same cup of tea, but it's different perspectives on it, which changes how it looks. And it's the same with reframing a belief. Like I could have, and I had already, I did that when I was being aware of it. I used to tell me when I realized it, hey, my my size is my biggest strength. My body, like, because I'm not as big, I can play in, like, tight spaces and more technical and um, more flexible and I, I can, yeah, I mean, I can handle small spaces on the pitch. I mean, I was a, a an offensive midfield player, like the number t like the number 10. Um, so it actually helped me. Like, my size helped me. And it was, uh, like, I didn't changed my size but I just had this new perspective hey my, my size is my biggest advantage like it, it will help me so that's the, the second step and the third step is then to um, to find uh, how would I say in, in, in English it's like a proof kind of in in German it's like a beweis it's like a proof it's a um, something that proves that my that this conviction is actually true, and to be honest, like we usually we confirm whatever we believe to be true, like what we believe to be true, we confirm with the outside. Our focus goes, hmm? yeah, it's the confirmation bias, right? That, that's how psychologists would call it, like the confirmation bias. We we confirm what we believe to be true. Because I believed, oh, I'm too small. I saw, oh, the coach subbed me out, maybe. And I thought, oh, it's because I'm too small. Or I saw the, for example, the sprint tests. Oh, I'm one of the slowest guys. Oh, it, and it, all con it believed, or it, um, it was a proof that my conviction was true. But on the other hand, I could find beliefs for the other one as well. Like if I reframe it, it's my job, it's like a job, to put my focus on things that prove my new conviction, my new narrative. And of course we find it. Like um, when we put focus to it, we find it. Because where, where our focus goes, our energy flows. And so the, the energy is going into those proofs that help me, um, yeah, or that, that help me convince myself that my size is actually my advantage. Maybe when I think think about that, I I have in mind some some uh, sequences on the pitch or some events on the pitch where I was in a completely tight space and I was able to find solutions. Say, so, ah, okay, I wouldn't have done, wouldn't be able to done have done that if I would be bigger, for example. So you believe or you you get yourself some proofs and you can um, find proof in three areas in the past in the present and in the future. So this, uh, con to co confirm the new narrative, you got to find those, be the, those proofs in the past, the present and the future, in past successes, for example. Think about like the last couple of years and think about what you have done well. Think about your successes. Think about how you developed as a player, as a person. Think about the challenges that you had and how you overcame them. Think about some experiences that were really difficult, but you still were able to to show your performance. For example, I maybe that's an interesting story too. I had one player who used to think like, "Oh, I can't deal with pressure." So his narrative, his belief, his conviction was, "Ah, oh, every time I have pressure, I can't really perform." And then we shifted it, like, "Yeah, I, I can't perform under pressure." And then we looked for some proofs in the past. And he saw so many examples where he had a great performance in really high-pressured games. So he just didn't have the focus to see them. Um, or another example, I had one player, in the th professional player from the third division. He said, "Oh, I, I don't, uh, I can't uh, bring, I can't bring good um, 
crosses in. That was his conviction. So we shifted it and then we had looked for some proofs. And when he looked at his last season, he actually had six assists with crosses. It's crazy what the mind does. So like the mind puts the focus on everything that's not going well. Maybe he had the focus on those crosses that didn't count. But when we shift our focus and confirm our new belief, like we also find proof. So finding those, finding those um, things in the past that we have done well. So past and in the present. Every day we can look for a little success that we make. Okay, we're making progress. We're um, what I, what did I do re well today, for example? Just this sm small little, sometimes they call it success journal, whatever you want to call it. It's like just like putting focus and energy into your successes to shift your, your self-image, I guess, um, which would be another concept we could talk about, uh, I mean, for hours, but um, just to stay with that. Um, and then in the future as well, like you could visualize you being in this situation and being able to, to show your performance, even though you're a smaller player. You could see yourself like a, like a Lionel Messi to, to see, okay, I mean, even though Messi is not as big, Iniesta, Xavi, Coutinho, like there are so many players who are not big players, but they're still great football players. So uh, you could imagine yourself how you do that. So this would be like a proof in the future and if you would be and if you can be able to to see it and feel it um like it's already done like it also strengthens strengthens you you believe your new narrative um that we just shifted so this this three step process again from being conscious about the belief reframe the belief and then confirm the belief um and then it's a, a matter of like some focus some time to, to shift it to also um, that your subconscious mind realizes it because um, of course when I'm thinking about it with my my conscious yeah of course it's, it's okay um, but it gotta be ch the change gotta happen inside and this will take some time some action some habits um, that will help you yeah I guess strengthen it really really bit um, firmly inside of you. Um, but this three step process will have help. Yeah, I think um, I completely uh, resonate with that because a mental process that I have, I have um, two exercises that I do every two days and it changes every fortnight. So this is one of my big ones that I do. And uh, this is actually something that we're going to start sharing on uh, our Instagram for some people to use. And what I'll add to that, I really love how you've got the, uh, the the last part of finding proof to change that narrative, right? What I also uh, typically do is getting alignment with that proof being with, coming from within, if that makes sense. And and that's something that we we say it's in our podcast is that it comes from within, right? So whenever we have a guest, right, um, like Val. He was a guest um, originally, and now when we had who is Valentin Mecklenburg, we ask, what, are you, what do you stand for? What are your three morals, right? And this is something that I always align with when I'm doing my mental work is my three morals are professionalism, dedication, and effort, right? So if I was to tie it into those three things to find proof of why I can change my narrative to be, okay, for me, obviously, um, my pre-narrative wouldn't be that I'm too small. Actually, it could be. I'm only like 187 centimeters, so I'm not, I'm not a giant. But for a goalkeeper, maybe I would want to be a bit taller. But maybe if I was to go for that pre-narrative, um, and to tie it in with my morals, it could look like, okay, well, maybe maybe my height for me, if I was to do it, maybe my height is something that hinders me. But how would I change that to make that belief benefit me? I would say, okay. Well, I've got proof that I could still jump high, okay? I've got the physical proof. I've got the physical proof that I can save top corner goals the same as Manuel Loya can. You know, I've got this I've got this physical proof. But now the the proof that comes from within, I see it as, okay, well, how can I align this with my morals? So I've got the professionalism. Well, my professionalism tells me that 
okay, it might be something that is a weakness, but I can only control the things um, like my jumping so that I'm better at jumping, right? So my professionalism would say, okay, well, I can work on my jumping. This is the biggest thing for a goalkeeper about height and being smaller, right? So if I'm able to jump higher, that's where my professionalism lines up. I know that I'm going to work. <coughs> Sorry. I know that I'm going to work very hard to get that metric higher so that I'm improving. So I've got my professionalism and effort in alignment with each other. And then my dedication says, okay, well, I'm going to be working on this every single day, little, t little steps at a time. Maybe it's my ankle ability. That's not great. That's true for me. My ankle ability is horrible. And that's this is something that I'm working on right now. So it works perfectly. So I know that every day I can incorporate a new habit. So I've got a mini trampoline in my, in my uh, room. It's great. I love it. Recommend it to anyone. And then I've also got a, a flossing band to improve my ankle mobility. And every, every day, 15 minutes, I'm just jumping on the mini trampoline with uh, my flossing band around my ankle. And this ties in with professionalism, dedication, and effort. But it's such a silly thing, right? But it's, this is going to reaffirm and give proof to any pre-narrative that I might have. And you can obviously change that uh, in response to whatever pre-narrative you have. But aligning your pre-narrative physically and mentally with your morals, it's it's so powerful, right? And that's how you get the habitual thought fixed because yes, um, obviously you want to you wanna reinstate that new pre-narrative, but without reinstating it every few hours or every day, there's not going to be much of a change, right? And we want that change to be quite exponential and it's serving us. And I think that realigning it with physical proof and uh, realigning with evidence from within is going to be so powerful for anyone wanting to change any pre-narratives. Yeah, I love that, Ben. Um, I think that's a, such a great way. I have a similar technique that I do uh, with athletes too. Um, I, and I want to touch base on one underlying thing that um, I think is the foundation for everything. It's um, sometimes they call it growth mindset. You, you guys probably have heard of it. Um, like this, like the belief that you can develop and get better and grow, of course. And um, when I hear you talk about that, I hear like the growth mindset in you speaking. Like, yeah, I can get better when I am professional, when I'm dedicated, when I put in effort and, and so on. So you, you have this self-image about, hey, of course, I'm good the way I am, but I can always get better. I can um, improve and work on my weaknesses so they can become strength. And um, so this underlying belief that, hey, I'm good the way I am, but I um, can also grow and get better um, is, I, I guess, a really good foundation because um, if you have this fixed mindset, on the other hand, which, yeah, is, which is to believe that um, our characteristics, our skills and everything are fixed and we can't do anything about it. If we, if we had that, I mean, why, why wouldn't, why would we work on, um, to get better if we believe we can get, can't get better. So I think this growth mindset is such a re really good foundation. And, um, sometimes I, um, I think I didn't used to think that, uh, my, all my characteristics are fixed, but sometimes I, I'm, I was in this, I guess, mood to, oh, I need to compare myself to others. I, um, I stayed away from challenges or taking responsibility because I thought, oh, what, what are others thinking about me when I mess up or whatever. So I, um, I was also looking for a lot of conflict, like for approval or approval in the outside, which hindered me. And if I had just yeah, worked on myself and stayed with myself, like for things to change, I got to change. Like I, I got to change myself, like from the inside, like you said, to change something in the outside. Um, it would have helped me of course. Uh, so yeah, that was what was in my mind when you talked about that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, it's a great, it's great to, you know, have these anecdotes from yourself and to learn all these personal experiences because obviously what works for me might not work for you what works for others might work for me you know it's it's all very personal and 
uh, that's why we're getting so many people who are leaders in their spaces because you've got so many different different ways of getting better, right? And I, I really like your point of uh, the growth mindset. And obviously that's Carl Dweck and it's a great book. That was the first book that I actually, I think I ever read. And it really is, it's, it's, it's a foundation of thought. And <laughs> sorry, you can really improve on everything, right? And okay, maybe some things are, you might believe are completely out of your control, but you can still influence things to benefit you or to change it just a little bit and you can completely do anything that you put your mind to right and and okay maybe the height one that's a it's a little bit out of your control but you can do things to make sure that you can get up to the people who are maybe taller than you for the, the example where i was saying okay well if i'm mm -hmm. too small and i want to jump higher then i can jump as high as the goalkeepers who are who are tall right so there are things that you can improve uh to serve you and uh, that being said, Val, I just wanted to ask: uh, Have you got any uh, anything else before we um we start to go through our last questions for you, Liz? And no, I just have some examples I thought about myself about the height situation or the uncontrollable things in life. But like shifting your mindset in the direction of taking action um, about maybe improving in those certain areas. Um, yeah, th that's what I was thinking about currently and, and it's fascinating to hear both of you speak it's like i am one of the listeners and um yeah so go ahead with the final questions yeah well uh, that's such a great point about uh, the action part because i think i mean it's nice to talk about it and it's important to talk about it and yeah becoming aware of some things but like i said before like i think it's this jim Rohn quote like uh for things to change, you got to change. For things to get better, you got to get better. Like if you don't do something with it, if you in this this critical situation, when you next time, if you don't don't step up, anyways, like if you step don't step up, step up again, like nothing will change. Like you got to we got to work on that. And there's one quote from Abraham Maslow, like uh, on top of my shelf, like you can see them see it right now. But it reminds me about like stepping outside of my comfort zone again and again and again because that's what makes us grow, of course. So um, it's not just about realizing some things. It's like, yeah, taking those small decisions in those critical moments to step outside of the comfort zone, even though sometimes our mind says, oh, don't do that. It's too dangerous. It's too bad. Oh, what will others think about it? What be careful you can it's dangerous whatever it is like we sometimes have those limits in my in our mind and doing things anyway like feeling and, and sensing the fear but doing things anyway anyways will sooner or later we will show you hey i mean it's okay like i'm still here i can crawl i will get better and it's this quote about Abraham Maslow that in any given moment, we have those two options. We can step forward into crow or we can step back into safety. Of course, our, our brain wants to keep us safe. Like that's the foundational um, task that our brain has. Like it has one goal, like to keep us safe, like to, to prevent us from uncertainty and everything. But like life is about uncertainty and of course, this impulse like helped us survive, I guess, like from an evolutionary perspective. But nowadays, it prevents us to be successful. So now we got to shift our brain not for not to focus on survival, but to focus on success. So, like Abraham Maslow said, like in every any given moment, we have those two options: step forward into growth or step back into safety. And we just gotta choose growth over and over again and overcome fear again and again and one day what used to feel like uncertain and fearful and oh i could never do that if you've done it a couple of times like we've all experienced that if you've done it a couple of times it it feels normal like first time driving a car like it's so difficult you're so i don't know like oh you're thinking about everything and after a hundred rides, like sometimes you don't even know you're driving and you arrive at your destination or 
is playing in front of 50,000 people, of course, the first time, wow, it's, it's, an, it's overwhelming maybe. But if you've done that 10, 20, 30, 40 times, you're getting used to it. Like our, our body, our brain is adaptable. Like we can adapt to so much. And um, if we're willing to, to step out of it, and maybe I can share another th story of one of the professional players I play with. And um, he um, used to play in the, Bundes in the Bundesliga, first division, then uh, internationally. Now he also plays internationally in a country um, where there's a lot of pressure. Like, uh, well, I mean, because he's playing in Brazil and it's so, em like, Brazilian people, I think people, they are so emotional about football. Like, you guys know that, like, uh, in the World Cup, it, you saw that too. And I mean, it's it's good it, in the highs. It's amazing. Like they're so um, yeah happy about everything and push their team. But in the lows, of course, it, it can be tough. Like, and he told me like the other day that uh, they lost one game 6-0 uh, and they got back with the plane to the airport and there were a couple hundred fans waiting for them and telling them how how can you lose whatever and like really being pressuring them pressuring them and he he's like yeah but i i've done i've been in that before i mean it's something normal it's complete like he he didn't even thought that he, uh, he didn't even think that it's a problem like he just uh, yeah and some other guys who have who has never have never experienced that and for me it was the same one and i experienced it the first time i was like so in my own head and having this uncertainty and um, so what I want to say with that like choose growth choose those situations that are uncertain that don't feel like uh, that scare you the most like this will make you grow the most um, and one day it, what used to feel uncertain will feel safe and um, what used to be uncomfortable will feel comfortable and then there will be new challenges and it's a continual process uh, that will probably never stop till the day we die <laughs> yeah i think that's a really cool point to to add because as you said the brains are so adaptive and uh you can reach a new level of homeostasis so quickly just through habits and just through experiences in life and yeah it's a really interesting point that you make there and i think it's definitely putting it into perspective for a lot of people who are listening right now because it, it is the human brain is genuinely crazy right and it, it's yeah it, it's so i mean in in all areas of life right i mean for me for example when i've when i've flown overseas to go live by myself for, for the first time you know when i was i did this when i was 15 I, and it, it was at the time crazy right and now it's just normal. This I've been doing this for year, uh, a year and maybe a quarter now. This is just normal. But for anyone else, it's that would be that would be massive for them. Some people don't even even want to go outside of that comfort zone to grow as an individual. But for me now, this is just my normal, and it is crazy to see how the brain is so adaptive and uh, yeah, it's 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 wired. It's a pattern recognition machine and. My pattern is becoming my new level of homeostasis, and it's it's really interesting to hear uh, your experiences with that as well, and your your anecdotes um, from people who you know as well. So I think that's really cool. Um, that being said, I'm just gonna quickly. So this is our final question that we uh, typically have, and it's three ways that you sculpt yourself on a daily basis. The first thing would be like my morning routine, like. First thing in the morning, uh, which kind of changed since my, uh, when my daughter was born because um, sometimes when I have routines, like she mixes them up all the way, <laughs> which it was a quite a difficult lesson for me to learn <laughs> because I I love my routines and um, how I got my my myself like was through my morning routine like it was usually um, when I wake up usually pretty early after enough enough hours of sleep because sleep is so key so um my morning routine would be to drink uh, a glass of water take my supplements uh, do a meditation um, do a little stretching or mobility um, and do some journaling so like this 
this routine helped me like I become more self-aware. Th this is how I, I guess, opened this room between my thoughts and my reactions. But usually, because you before that, my thoughts were true to me, and I, yeah, reacted. I guess a little bit more impulsively. But now I, when I started with my morning routine. Um, I learned myself. Like I got, I was got got to know myself more, and uh, through journaling and reading and everything, it helped me a lot to to change um, every single day. And sometimes now with my daughter, it's uh, not the way I want it to be, but um, still I can fit in what it's important to me. So it's like meditation, it's journaling, uh, it's reading. Um, those are some key things. Um, so all in my morning routine, I think. I, I've seen you get quite adaptive with uh, your morning routines and your daughter. I've seen, I've seen her popping uh, on the yoga before. You hold her like the whole way, the whole way. I, I watched the time lapse. It was crazy. I couldn't believe you actually did it the whole way. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she loves dancing. Um, so I, usually when I hold her, I do some squats, some lunges. And um, so, yeah, my, my workouts and my meditations uh changed a little bit <laughs> for after my career um, now with my daughter and sometimes my meditation with her in my arm is like when she's already when she already fell asleep but she I can't like put her to bed right away she wants to hold for, for a little bit so I just sit there like and in, um, in the seat and hold her and then I do stuff that I think helps her too because just breathing or just doing like um, so like a sound that that comforts her, and it's a meditation for me as well. Being present with her helps me. So um, yeah, got to be a little bit creative uh, nowadays because it's, yeah, just the way it is. Um, and it it's good. I mean, I like it. Uh, so this would be the first thing I'd say. Um, my morning routine, which which like includes probably four or five things that um help me a lot. The second thing I would say that helped me sculpt myself was my my surroundings, my um, the people I spent time with. Um, I think that was a really big key because I mean you hear that so many times. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You you become yeah your, your surroundings and. Um, it was so true for me because uh, when I was in the in the states for three years and I um, thought bigger, I yeah did a lot of personal development. And when I got back to Germany, like I had this feeling that uh, here in Germany, uh, in my old circle, I guess, like the the time stood still, which which is a good feeling. Like okay, coming back home, it's still the same. But for me, it was critical to surround myself with people who are as crazy as I am, <laughs> who, who are walk, walking on the same path, the path of personal development, um, which, yeah, it, it's just not normal because what's normal today is uh, n nothing for me because um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on a different path and I think it helped me a lot to be surrounded with, with people on the same wavelength, I guess. And I'm not just talking about the, the people in my um, environment. It's 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 the books that I read. It's the the podcasts that I'm listening to. It's the events, the seminars that I attend. Like everything that goes inside, like help or like that I surrounded myself with, helped me uh, sculpt myself. Um, and talking about that, I think the third way um, would be nutrition. And it's maybe something that's not as, or maybe it's too obvious to mention, but I mean, nutrition is, is key. And it's also something that you, your input like determines your output. Uh, and I think uh, if you're not eating properly, like eating the right food, um, taking the right supplements that your body needs, um, drinking a lot of water, I think it's it's hard to feel good about yourself. Like that's what I usually say. Like a, a a strong mind lives in a strong body. Like without having a lot of energy, sleeping right, eating right, and so on. Like it's it's hard to 
to think right and be mentally strong too. So it's usually those fundamentals uh, that I discuss with athletes too, like eating, moving, sleeping, and breathing and focusing that shifted um, me and sculpted myself. So I think um, those would be some aspects, um, yeah, that I've done for the last years, like um, maybe to put a frame on it, um, it's not just doing them once in a while, it's like being consistent with it. Like consistency um, helped me, yeah, change myself, change those beliefs, those convictions, um, helped me grow. And with every decision that I took for myself, like, hey, today I ate right, I moved, I uh, did my meditation. So with every decision I took for myself, like it, it helped me... Um, get a better feeling about myself too and um yeah which is still a process because i think i'm still at the beginning there's so much more to to do and to learn and to to um grow but yeah those were a couple of those uh, things that helped me a lot yeah i think it's a really cool point just quickly um i think it's a perfect example right you're saying that these processes help you grow as an individual what we refer to with sculpted is these practices that you have are all in alignment with this greater vision of yourself that you have for the self-development, right? So you're sculpting away everything you do with purpose to make yourself a better person for everyone around you, right? You you have to work on yourself first and all these ways that uh, you just explained, sculpt yourself, that at the end of the day, and you said it's a process, right? You said at the beginning. So you're still sculpting away, trying to refine different pieces of the 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 sculpture right and this is exactly what we love to hear at sculpted and um val is there anything that you want to uh quickly touch on um i think a small thing uh to you is i know he's a big fan of routines and habits and etc and he touched up on the the comparison of we are all humans you know but uh the habits separate our uh, perspective of each other uh, for example, Cristiano Ronaldo's habits, you know, we, we um, learned so much about his habits, the social media and etc. But for example, for the listeners out there, a quick question, how can you create habits that work mentally for you? Or for example, for myself, in the past, I've tried to find a, a good routine for myself. I'm sure your routine has changed over the years, you know, by, uh, through your daughter, through different circumstances, through a different environment, uh, through the US, etc. For me, the same, you know, online or on social media, there are so many different routines for so many different people. And I think it's the wrong perspective of just trying to copy and paste that routine. And if it, if it doesn't work for us, uh, then we, we get overwhelmed or, or we we get into a negative space because, oh, this is not working for me, but this should work for, my, for, for, for others. And I think how you find a good routine that sticks, because I, in the last few weeks, have found a good routine that sticks for myself. But uh, maybe for listeners, don't be too harsh for yourself uh, about yourself uh, in terms of finding the right technique with as many um, activities. As you mentioned, for example, your routine has five things incorporated and um, different things. For myself, in the morning, I try to stick to two, three things that I uh, actively work on to get those done in my morning routine. Maybe in the future, I, I will remove one or add one or two different activities. But at the moment, this works for me and, and, and I think I've shifted my mindset in that sense that it works for me at the moment. I don't know, maybe you have some strategies. Yeah, really, really nice. And I totally agree. I think there is no one way that fits everyone. I think we're so, as much as we are similar, we're also unique in our own path that we go and what works for you doesn't work for me whatever like I think um, being open to try and test out new things and if you feel like okay it doesn't work anymore change to be open to change uh, is a really really big one one um, technique or method that helps is making routines as small as possible which sounds weird right now but um Sometimes, and I know that sometimes um, I'm a guy who some yeah who has like really a high standard too. So sometimes I was like, okay, I need to do a twenty minute med meditation and stretching and this and that and read a book a week. And and after all done that, of course, it's during some times. But sometimes I 
tried to do so many things that it was like standing in front of a really, really big mountain and being overwhelmed because, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Like, because there was so much, I didn't know where to start. So I would suggest like start with one, two, three habits that make the difference or make make the biggest difference for you that give you the most important or the big the good the good the best feeling i guess um so your number one self-care habit that you totally need to be on like to be your at your a game at, at, at in your best um i think first of all being open to do what works for you and then making them as small as possible not saying okay meditation i need to meditate for 20 minutes a day say hey I'm, I gotta med do meditation and I ca it can be a meditation for one minute a day it can be sitting here taking 10 deep breaths in and out and you can still check the meditation habit I guess um, so make them then easy read 10 pages a day and maybe you read 15 maybe you read a, a whole chapter but 10 day p pages a day will still give you like this sense of okay i did that um and also i i um, usually work with triggers too being conscious about my habit so that i can actually check them um maybe print out a piece of paper and write down your habits and then check them um when you did that at, at the day which gives you a good feeling um yeah those are some things but we could pro talk about habits and routines probably for for two days <laughs> and not discuss everything about it um yeah i hope that this helps too though yeah for sure i think um also a huge part is like the, the, the thing you mentioned last the accountability tracker or something because i think sometimes we get uh, overwhelmed by maybe too many tasks or that we we get lost or uh, get off track of what we have accomplished that day and maybe in the evening we see our accountability tracker has three four tasks that we didn't do and then we get back into the maybe the negative space so i think that's a huge part you mentioned yeah 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 of course and i liked your um uh, the talk about like being sculpted like taking away the parts that are in the way of our best version like um, like uh, Michelangelo did with David. I don't know if you've heard the story. Like, he ch like when he was asked about it, he just removed all the pa parts that weren't David, and then he got like one of the most famous pieces of art in history. Well, I also had one story in mind um, about the Golden Buddha. I don't know if you have you heard of it, Golden Buddha. So there was this golden uh, statue, like the golden Buddha, which was so precious, so expensive, so um, uh, so worthy um, back in the days. And there were, were a time where the, um, I don't know which country and which, in which area, it was some, somewhere in the east, um, where people came and um, run, ran through the, the, through the land and destroyed everything. So the people of this little village put dirt on this golden Buddha, like the statue, the big statue. And when the, like the fighters and every, they, everybody came, they looked at the statue and said, oh, it's, it's not worth anything. Like I just go, like they just passed it and destroyed the village, but they passed the golden Buddha and hundred years later, like they, everybody forgot about it because they don't, didn't know about the golden Buddha statue. And one day there was this little crack that opened up and somebody passed it and saw like a little like light coming off, like this reflection of the light. And he said, hey, why is it gold? So he started to peel off like the dirt and the mud and everything that they put around this golden Buddha statue. And he detected like this, that it's like one of the wor worthy or like it's so worthy and precious uh, pieces of history and art um, and that's what I connect with being sculpted like we all have this golden Buddha or like this golden human inside of us like we all got the way we are you know but sometimes some things can get in the, into the way of us showing like this most 
or this best self that we all have inside. And with little routines, with little decisions, um, we can, yeah, take away what's not part of us and show what's really inside of us. And um, I think the, the mental part of the game is a big one to do that, um, but so much more. So I'm um, happy that you shared all those st uh, strategies and techniques and methods um, to, yeah, to help others uh, sculpt themselves. Uh, so I really like the concept of, of your podcast and everything you do. Thank you so much, Julius. I think that's it's been a grand episode, and I can see Val's he's he's, he's happy, and uh, <laughs> so am I. It's been it's been really it's it's been an honor to speak with you today. And uh, that being said, uh, guys, for anyone listening right now, please follow Julius on on social media. He's got his own podcast that he also uploads on. Um, so we will link all of his uh, socials and everything. Um, and please, guys, follow him if you're uh, German. That's it's best, but he also does a lot of stuff in English as well. Um, so please go follow him and listen to what he's got to say uh, on his platform because it really is, as you've heard from this episode today, it's 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 really valuable and you can learn many things uh, from the top players that he's worked with. And yeah, but thank you so much again, Julius. It's it's been really really good. Thank you guys, and um, yeah, I'm really excited and happy that I was here today and um, to. Yes, see the process of you guys um, sculpt yourself and the, the community and everything. So, um, yeah, I'm really thankful for you. I learned something new today as well. So I'm um, getting better every single day and I'm excited for where we're going. So, 